company called Elvis Multimedia. And uh, Anna is my colleague, she is the DM of operations. And Richard is also my colleague. He is a software engineer and a professional Carnatic singer. He is doing a PhD in Carnatic music also. Basically, I am a farmer and I learned Miyawaki methods as part of my planting techniques. I was uh, interested in planting trees in my own land and uh, it's a dry land. It's a dry land called from this east of Trivandrum. It's called Puyarakora, where there is no water. So I bought the land for a very low price and I thought I will plant trees there, trees which are vanishing from our surroundings like Maruti, Kami, Chara. Probably many of you might not have heard these names. Because I am 57 year old and in my childhood all these trees were there in our courtyards. But today, unfortunately, as part of our organization and as part of uh, maybe our quest for uh, making something out of everything, because whenever I say somebody, uh, tell somebody that you plant some trees there, then the first question will be, what did I get out of it? We are planting trees for some bigger goals. If we want to live in this planet after some time, we have to start planting at the earliest. So I tried myself several methods of planting trees for almost eight years, and almost all of them invariably failed. I was planting 500 plant trees every year and around 40 to 50 of them used to go through some way, somehow. And after one of those seasons, they will also come down because there was no water. So what was the methodology? What can create a forest there was the uh, major uh, question that I was facing. And somehow I landed in this Miyawaki method of afforestation which is very popular all over the world. Unfortunately, I am a, a professional working in the field of mass communication. Unfortunately, I was not aware of this technique because there were so many uh, articles and feelings and everything on Miyawaki in the net since 2010 or so. But I uh, came to know about it only in 2016. And it took around one and a half years for me to learn the technique. I tried the technique and uh, mastered it and I have been uh, employing it for last one and a half years and uh, there is sufficient reason. So far we have set up around 10 forests in Trivandra and surroundings in to Munar. Now we are going to the next phase, uh, helping anybody who wants to set up the forest and uh, setting up forests in other parts of Kerala. So before going to that, I will... So we need a little more time to connect this presentation, so the issue is there. So basically Miyawaki, as you know, is a, is a Japanese modernist. He is still alive. He is 91 year old and very active in planting uh, trees and the plants till last year or so. I think even today he is active. I don't know. I, I don't have any contact directly with him. Some of the institutes in Japan are connected with us and they are giving us so the speciality of this method is he is advising us to plant the potential natural vegetation. So what you are planting in uh, this area, which is a coastal area, may not be suitable for Munga, which is a highland. Unfortunately, in our own afforestation programs, we have around 10 to 12 uh, tree types, which the forest department is supplying and which we plant everywhere. So we are planting rose food everywhere. Maybe when we go to forest, they give us uh, uh, saplings of uh, sandal, teak, and uh, uh, rose food. And there are only 10 or 12 trees that they are supplying. Of course, acacia, manjim, and eucalypts, and all those nonsense. <coughs> and we are planting them. What we have to say is, is, there is a basic difference between forest and monoculture. What we are doing here is monoculture. What we have been doing to earth, for the last 700 years, when we started agriculture, we uh, putting monoculture everywhere. I mean, we do rubber plantation, we do coconut plantation, cashew plantation, all these things are what, they, what we are doing is, we are uh, clearing a forest area because the entire earth was forest at a time. Now we are clearing each part of it and doing cultivation there. By cultivation, what we do 
is we clear the land, then we make the land suitable for any single crop. If you want to do rubber cultivation, you check whether the land is good for rubber or what are the manures and the uh, chemicals there. And if you want to add more, we will add more things which are suitable for rubber. So that means we are trying to kill all other plants there. We want only rubber there. So if you are doing coconut plant, same is the case. We want only coconut there. Like that, we have been doing for several years and the biodiversity, the plant diversity has completely gone. So the problem is that rubber is only there for any particular crop, X, Y or Z, only there. The pests and other uh, natural uh, enemies of that plant will come there and try to kill that plant. There we will resort to pesticide. We know what is happening in the uh, where we are using chemicals like endosulfide which makes the life miserable there. But we have nothing to do, uh, uh, even the plantation corporation, which is a public sector corporation, a government entity, they are saying that we have to use endosulfide, otherwise cashew cultivation will not be profitable. So, to make the cashew cultivation profitable, we have <coughs> hundreds of children there, making their life miserable. Even we are not killing them, we are killing them inch by inch. It is not a, just a model. It is more serious than that. And it has been happening all these years. We are reading stories on that. We are not being able to do anything even after 50 years or 40 years. This is the basic problem for monoculture. So what is happening in forest? Look at the forest. There you have all plants, all insects, all animals, everything that is an enemy of plant which we believe, but still forest is there. Do you think that insects are not eating the leaves of uh, trees in the forest? Yes, they are. But there are other insects also which you catch these insects. So it is a mixture of nature, I mean various insects and plants in the nature, a, a group of uh, uh, what a sort of a productivity that is happening there. So it manages, there is a sort of pest management system, which is a natural pest management which is happening there, unlike our pesticides or other things which are which is quite anti-natural. Anyway, many of the people who are doing organic farming including me, we claim that uh, some of these uh, insecticides are organic pesticides. Actually, there is nothing called organic pesticides. Something we are using for killing the organism and calling it organic pesticide. So, there is nothing organic pesticide. We, we, we want to develop a system where we can manage without pesticides. That should be the ultimate aim of our farming and all sorts of culture. So, before presentation, I can tell you what I am going to uh, present the presentation, some of those things. In New York, in Badarat, one thing that we are doing is, uh, see, normally when we plant a tree or, a, or a, uh, any, any sapling, we give a space for that plant. When we are planting two coconut trees in this area, maybe we have only this much of plant, we will put one there and one here, because we believe that both plants should get sufficient sunlight. And that is the basic philosophy of our farming, basic model of our farming. But whereas in New York, in Badarat, we are putting the plants very close, very close in the sense that we are putting three to four plants in one square meter of land. That's the, the, the think of a banyan tree growing in one square meter of land. And there is another banyan tree or another banyan or some other tree next to that. So in a plot of around 1000 square feet, which is 100 square meter, there will be around 400 plants. So that is a very, very uh, uh, delicate situation where all these plants will not get sunlight. So the plants will have to grow up, they will go up for getting sunlight. So there is a competition between plants and because of that competition, the growth of the plants will be much faster. That is the basic philosophy of Miyawaki. And second thing is, there should be a plant diversity. When you are putting four plants in one square meter, this should not be four coconut trees, it should be four different plants. When you are uh, planting 400 trees in 100 square meter, there should be shrubs, there should be some trees, there should be trees, there should be creepers, there should be herbs, there should be emergent trees. All these things should be mixed so that in the 400 uh, plants which we are planting in 1000 square meter, 1000, 100 square meter, it is 1000 square feet, there should be at least 1700 <coughs> species and 200 to 300 types of plants. That means almost uh, uh, the number of uh, species or uh, types of trees in a big area, we are copying that in, even in a very small area which is only 100 square meter. And because of that, there will be 
do many different insects, insects and uh, plant types because when insects are there, normally the pollination will be very fast. Uh, we, have, uh, we have seen butterflies in everywhere, there are even butterfly gardens. But one basic thing about butterflies or any other insect is that they are not coming to the same tree. If you have only one tree, you cannot see all the butterflies there. Because butterflies have a selection, I mean, certain type of butterflies, they put, lay their eggs only on certain plants or they take uh, honey only from certain plants. So, if you want all the butterflies to be there, there should be a different set of plants, not just one plant, there should be a series of plants. So, in Miyawaki, we are trying for some diversification now. We make flower forms, they have been put only flowering plants and around 100 or 150 flowering plants can be play, uh, planted in a very small area like this. And there you can see hundreds of butterflies. So the important thing is that there are, say for example, there are certain type of bugs which do the pollination of one particular plant. If you want melon, you need a particular bug there. Only that bug can do the uh, pollination for that melon. So when that bug goes out of nature or uh, it is not there in that vicinity, this melon's pollination will not happen. Just like that. So we always ask what is the use of insect. This is the problem. When we are planting uh, some uh, monocrops, maybe you are planting ladies finger or a brinjal or something at all. You try to kill all the other insects which you don't want there. But those insects should be there for uh, doing the pollination of other plants. This is the basic problem for the fruit garden. So to avoid that, we are trying to put all these things together and uh, try to get the advantage of uh, having... Uh, so if you want to ask any questions on what you have heard now, uh, it will be easy for me to explain. There will be a competition for, you know, like, uh, say, uh, four types of trees in one square meter. <coughs> what about the water and the water? Like, uh, one thing is... Sunlight, of course, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have to do a, probably, I think you know the answer also, isn't it? No. Okay. And I thought you know that technique. See, the thing is that uh, when we are planting like this, we remove all the soil up to one meter and mix it with coil pits. Rice mill and cow dung. Cow dung is for a, a manure and the coquit is for water. Coquit can store water and the rice mill is for a, reducing the uh, sticky nature of soil. So, in certain areas, maybe in that red sand or the sand will be very, uh, what is it, when very dry and when there is no water, even the roots cannot move on. So, when we are putting this rice mill, the sticky nature of the soil will come down. And we are putting these three, bio, three biomass items up to uh, uh, around 10 kilograms each for one square meter. That comes to around 40 kilograms of this thing and mixed with the soil. And then after that we do a lot of mulching. And mulching is being done, we are giving a cover with the uh, rice mill and the coil pits. So the water is being stored there. So water will uh, filter water goes there, that will be absorbed by the coil pit that it will be kept there. And other than that, we will also make a similar Potting mixture and keep this in a pot and put the plant there for three months before planting. So that by the time when we are replanting it, the tap root will be fully developed. And when we are taking a tree from a uh, from a pot like that and placing there, so its roots can very easily go into this particular type of soil that we are already. So we are creating an artificial environment in the soil. So in the pot itself, uh, you will have that same environment. Yeah, same. Then there are little things because by the time we plant it, it will be around 2 to 3 feet high. That we make possible by adding this coating mixture to the So that combination of things and all will be in the middle of the Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. There are now five roads. So many sites offering this content on Miyawaki. Uh, and even we have a site crowdforesting.org. So if you want to know more about it, you can go there and do it. And also, those who are planning to do this, uh, do, uh, I mean, study this uh, uh, Miyawaki Garden of Apollo Station, should also check for uh, uh, permaculture and polyculture. Permaculture is a method that is uh, very popular in Europe, where they are not using uh, pesticides and all, and also they are taking only what we want from the soil. So it is a basic greed of man should be uh, cut down and uh, should be done in a Agriculture should be seen as a slightly bigger thing. That is the basic philosophy of this uh, permaculture. And polyculture, they are, they are putting different crops in the 
See, there are so many videos on YouTube on this that body culture. There are many people who are leaving their jobs and uh, sitting down for performance and all of the work. So, second, third thing is, uh, and as you said, uh, when we change the soil, something else happens there because these microbes. We see what we have studied is this nitrogen, phosphorus, and the potassium. The NPK mixture is the thing that gives trees for the required elements for it. That is one side of the story. The other side is that there are microbes which can make the soil fertile. And the, the <coughs> impact of microbes is uh, uh, unbelievable. There is a, you might have heard of zero based farming, zero budget farming of Subhash Kalekar, where he is using the cow dung of uh, indigenous cows. And because, uh, why does he use indigenous cows? Because the cow dung of indigenous cows carries around one to two rows of microbes in, uh, uh, every time. I mean, whereas in the uh, Swiss cows and Australian cows which we are being brought here, we can't find many of those microbes. These microbes change the quality of the soil. Like that when we are uh, adding many of these things, the fungal, uh, fungal action is also going up and you can see many mushrooms coming up in the soil. That's because the basic nature of the soil is to be like that. So, thank you. I will uh, make the percentage and then you can ask me. Thank you. 
push together, carefully interlocking the timber. They dredge mud from the pond bottom to seal the dam. Each pond traps several inches of sediment every year, so there's plenty of it. The young act as apprentice builders, learning the tricks of the trade. Trees on Earth had already been cut by us. 
and these are some of our concepts of organic life. We, we say that earthen pots are organic. If you go to Mohanjodara or any other archaeological site, the first thing that they are collecting from that site is the clay, plates and all which people use to uh, make for their living. And that means for the 5000 years, all these things are there and this has not gone back to earth. Once you uh, burn the clay, then it becomes a different substance, it cannot go back to earth. You can call it earthy or whatever, but it's something that is different from nature, it will not go back. So the moment we start human life on earth, we started uh, have, uh, I mean we started doing construction, we started changing the earth, which cannot be put back. This is the modular of main part of modular of Arab part. This is the Maya culture in Mesopotamia and Central America. One basic thing about all the civilizations which we are boasting about. If we look from the sky today, what we see there is a big band of sand. There is no forest, there is no green grass. See, look at this. This is the, this is the Babylonia. But Babylonian culture was one of the biggest cultures of the time. So after a few years, what happens is there is nothing left, only the constructions. And next one. This is Indus Valley. This is the China's that can be seen, the yellow one. So, Nile, the pyramid. So, these are two cities, <coughs> three cities of the modern day. Can you identify which are these cities? Almost three looks the same. Only thing is, this one is slightly better than the other in the thickness and all. But everywhere the construction and the shape is the same. So what is New York, what is London and what is New Delhi? So New Delhi is aspiring to be like New York. Which means there will be no insect, no butterfly, no bird, nothing. It will be a complete jungle. And how do we clear forest? The simple method of clearing forest for mankind from the very beginning has been putting fire to forest. Which means destroying everything without any discrimination. Killing everything, spoiling everything and making the place free for our cultivation. We want to cultivate something for that we destroy everything which we cannot create. Next up is this uh, goats and cows are gone. Past the land. After uh, wildfire, there will be grass coming up in every uh, forest. And to eat that, we bring these goats and uh, cows and all. We use it and after this past the land, we start cultivation. This is the typical village farmer. The damage done to earth by these village farmers, still there is damage but it is limited. Then comes the next one, which is a mechanic farming. So we call it modern farming, where we clear everything, we, we change, look at the way the land is being changed. The machines are becoming heavy and heavy because we want to produce food and there were food. I mean the forest was full of leaves and foods and the uh, 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 we destroyed everything and conveniently we are putting things which we want. And these are ultra modern and they are using the machine for when planting the seeds. So let us look at this bird. There is a video of a bird. How this bird makes its house.
challenge is how to bring back this course. Says Dr. Miyawaki, as I said, the 91 year old botanist. He says he can uh, he can bring back the trees, and he is not just boasting. He has already planted 40 million trees. That is the uh, fourth row trees in uh, 1,300 sports across the globe. And you see there, most of these are now big flowers. He is still alive. So this is a video. We will show this video how this Miyawaki process happens. So it's a three to four minutes video. Uh, I think this. Okay, this is done by us in Kanavakunda to land up. You can see the forest there.
understand this, we're going to try it. We can calculate other things here. Akesha is down. Akesha can be seen in the background, nothing else can go there. Because of the thickness of the forest. 
And there are forests, there are uh, in front of uh, Yokohama National Museum in Japan, there is a 40 year old forest. Even in Mediterranean, they are done it. So, there are parts of the world you can see that it is a 40 year old forest, which are as good as our Western parts. This is a specialization. What we have done here is in this plot, we are done only flowering plants. And 100 flowering plants were put there. This was done on a 12th of May, that is almost two months back. And this is the present situation. There are 46 uh, to 50 flowers every time. I mean, different types of flowers. This is not a flowering season. Normally, our flowering season is April. But you can collect uh, flowers in there almost every time because of the collection of plants, there are different types of plants are there. I have collected those flowers, took the photographs of those flowers right now, available there. And all these pictures are taken from there. And again, another important factor is, as I said earlier, this is the vanishing species. The UN report says 1 million species are going to extinct within the next few years, which we cannot bring back and which will do heavy damage to our planet and we realize only the whole of the damage or the nature of that damage after this happens. So, if you have a Miyawaki forest, this is the insects we have collected from, the photographs of insects we have collected from the Miyawaki forest which we have shown you, which is only 18 months old. And there we got around 50 or 60 insects, very easy. So it's not easy to collect all the butterflies and all. The photography itself is the challenge. These are the insects we have found there. So this is what I have to say about Miyawaki mother. And if you have any specific questions, I can answer those questions. I am happy to answer that because that will be more easy to give you the expression of the other. Yeah. 
there are so many trees which, uh, uh, which, which can be grown in this bottom of areas. We have to select them. Third, um, like, um, so this is basically, I mean, on the ten years you have a like a dense like forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so after that, okay, I have one more question. But, uh, what you can ask 100 questions, I understand. So, uh, so you have to keep watering it, right? No, see, the maintenance of this forest will be over after 3 years. We don't have to maintain it after 3 years. The maximum period for maintenance is 3 years. Even after 3 years, you will not be able to enter that. Then the trees, trees will take care of themselves. And when it grows 15 feet high, the root is also going somewhere 15 feet down. So the water it can manage from the earth. It doesn't need our support for that. And in three years we have to because we have to be careful to cut the branches and all to uh, ensure a suction. I mean, as you said, some plants grow fast and some plants grow less uh, So in the first three years we have to maintain them. But after that you don't have to do anything. It will be growing and so on. The last question was, uh, like, is it possible to like, integrate agriculture with this thing? I, mean, I, I am trying that method. What we are trying, uh, it is not yet uh, ready for announcing. But what we are trying right now is because whenever we, we, we are doing this to promote a forest session. And whenever we bring some people and they show them this for us, the first question is what do we get out of this? So we want to give them an answer that we can get something out of this. So this flower we are doing like this because in temples and all, if there is a flower forest, uh, the temples can, can get the solution flowers that they need. That is one solution. Second thing is we are making food for us, where you can put fruits and vegetables and all. So 100, 150 trees giving fruits or vegetables. And another method which we are right now trying is instead of putting this one tree in four trees in one square meter in the house courtyards where you have only two, three, three or four cents of land, put one tree in two square meter. And let them grow because they will also grow because uh, because of uh, there will also be a condition for getting sunlight and all. Put only those trees which will give you fruits or flowers, uh, and then uh, fill the land with some more flowers and uh, coiffed and all. And plant your uh, uh, vegetables there. Say for example, if you put a tapioca there, you can remove that tapioca and see the soil is there. There are two layers of soil. When you remove it, do not affect the other plant. This is what mother we are trying right now. So I can tell you the result after six months, but it's possible. So what we are suggesting is somebody is uh, buying a four or five cent land for making a house. So he can uh, give the house to one or two cents, which is 800 square feet. You can make a, maybe if you want to make a three, two thousand five hundred square feet house, make it three storage. And then use the three or four cents for planting this thing. That will reduce the temperature in that area and uh, that will also help you to get whatever food crops you want. You can ask them the English or Maya, which one is okay. Thank you for such an inspiring presentation. And um, I have a question about the sourcing of the plants. Because there are quite a lot of the species in there, and you say they are native species. Can you please elaborate where did you get them and um, yeah, how is the composition inside? Probably that is the easiest thing and the most difficult thing. Because normally when we are sourcing a plant, we are looking to nurseries. Unfortunately, many of these plants are not available in nurseries. So there are two government agencies. One is the Tropical Botanical Garden, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Tropical uh, Botanical Garden in Palo, and Kerala Forest Research Institute in uh, Pichi. So uh, uh, Tropical Botanical Garden has identified 4,900 species from Kerala. But when we go there, they have been totally plants for sale and even when you ask for plants you get only 60 to 65 others are not available uh, it's because they are keeping them for research and all and there are no uh, plants for sale they are only making plants for sale and the question of the KFRI is also worse they are giving only 60, 50 to 60 plants for this so as of today what we can avail from Kerala is only 60 to 100 plants but at the same time all these plants are there in the village and all. Only thing you have to collect the seed and make a nursery yourself. So what we are doing right now is we have created a forest nursery in our office and surrounding that we have created uh, around uh, six forest nurseries across Kerala. And we are getting plants from different places. I mean, uh, there are tribal children and all who are ready to collect these things. We can pay them with money and get it. And plant the seeds. Even otherwise, 
There are so many seeds which are being wasted. You can see the banana seeds everywhere. You can see the turmeric seeds everywhere. Even the jackfruit, mango. You can uh, see at least 1500 trees everywhere which, uh, from where you can collect the seeds and uh, make a residue of the crop. Uh, can you please also elaborate on the cost of the aftercare and how the aftercare takes place? Yeah, this is uh, actually the, the cost per square feet is around 350 rupees. 350 rupees, that is uh, ba mainly the price of this cow uh, rice curd. Things like rice curd, it's not easy to get it because you have to go to in Kerala, that's only one place where they sell rice curd now, that is Akamai. So if you want to uh, get price curd, you have to go to Akamari and transit from there and transport into other parts of the state. Another solution is the uh, wood chips. I mean, the European knowledge, you can buy wood chips from the shop, but here it is not available. So what we can do here is uh, there are these furniture parts and all, then uh, building and stuff, uh, there you can take that. From there you can collect the wood chips. But there is a difference between wood chip and uh, sawdust. Please not use sawdust. Sawdust may create problems because there are stands for a fungus infection from the sawdust. Uh, so avoid sawdust, try to get wood chips. Wood chips are the slightly thicker ones. Uh, the what, what about the aftercare? So how many people do you need um, to and how much water do you need to keep it? Aftercare, if you have some interesting group, you are one or two people can do it. Because uh, in our office, some of us go to uh, this place in the mornings, maybe on Saturdays and all. Uh, two to three hours of work, this is over. And watering will be a little uh, uh, less of work, but uh, that we need only in the uh, summer season. And just like as you have seen, there are so many micro uh, irrigation systems which are available now uh, that also can be operated by a single person. So maintenance is not a big thing. If you have a nature problem or something, they can easily within the. The last question. Um, you mentioned in the beginning of your presentation that it took you about one and a half years to learn the method. Um, how much time do you think it will be needed for a person to learn from scratch? I think uh, in this 30 years you might have already learned, not only that to practice. Because my question was, uh, uh, I had to find some of these alternatives, uh, what to do, where to get these seeds and all. Now we have answered for almost all those questions and we are publishing it in our website, the crowdforce.org. So whatever question you have, you can ask us and uh, you can do it. Any person who knows to, how to plant a tree can make a forest also. It is, there is no big science in it. My only problem was that I have not heard about it. And I, I didn't know what was the uh, methodology used there. So now we are tested it and we have found it and we are publishing it the videos which shows how to do it. Because many of the videos in YouTube, they don't show how you plant it actually. The mix of soil and those things. So our job is video making. For a living we do that. So we do that systematically and then put it on the backwater site or beach areas like that uh, six seven classifications are there and uh, soil where uh, there is too much of land right so the classification is simple not every village or every panchayat has to be given like that you know that this is the beach area so there are several plants which grow in beach area they have given a list of plants to be planted in beach area like that they have given a list of plants to be planted in uh, hilly areas and what i have seen is most of the plants grow everywhere Irrespective of all these classifications and all, if you go to this post area, you can see young food there also. But we say that you go for tours and other things there. But still, you can also see the other plants here. And one thing we noticed is that uh, the growth of plants, other than the growth of plants, when we started taking fruits much earlier, some of the fruit plants which we have put in this BMRP for us, they started taking for, uh, fruits by 16 to 18 months. Normally it takes 3 to 4 years. But still it is bigger outside because uh, one or two cases only we found that, uh, that can be generalized. But maybe in uh, 
one year time you can see that, but I think the trend is like that. They are growing faster and giving results faster.
Pick God. How many people do it? How many people do it? Uh, we are now trying to do it in less than one sense of land. Just for seeing what will be that effect. 